So we got our rub made and we've got our, our smoker hot and now it's time to season up these ribs and get them seasoned. I like to use spare ribs. It probably starts a little bit with, you know, being interested in competition barbecue. Spare ribs is often, often a go-to rib because there's so much meat on there. These ribs are going to take about four hours to cook. If you're going to do competition barbecue, uh, you don't want any bone exposed on the ribs. Those are called shiners. I like to, I'll, I'll flip it over here in a second, I like straight bones for the most part. When it comes to age of pork, my sweet spot is probably somewhere between 7 and 14 days. And I'm going to just flip it over and I'm just going to take the longest bone right here and I'm going to use that as my mark to cut these down to St. Louis cut. And I'll usually just come in and, and score a mark before I cut all the way through. And, and this will be the rib tips here. And we can take this and still do something uh, in, in our food service operation. St. Louis cuts are so much easier for your guests to eat. They're so much easier for your team to work with. So anyways, I'm gonna cut this. Now when I'm doing competition barbecue, I will actually take this, this, this cut line here and I will put it on the edge of this and I'll make sure it's perfectly straight. Competition barbecue is, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's been growing all over the country, but it's about the minutest details. So anyways, we're just gonna take this and move it for right now. Let me take a little bit of this belly flap. I'm just gonna remove that. Now some people talk about they leave the membrane on the ribs and that it keeps moisture in. I, I don't subscribe to that. I don't like the texture of the membrane when it's cooked and it has like a paper-like quality for me. This is so much easier to do when the ribs are cold. And I'll just take either a kitchen towel or in this, in this case, a paper towel. And I just start at one corner. And I'm just gonna lift this membrane off and it just peels right back like that. When you think about barbecue and you think about barbecue restaurants, ribs are like the filet mignon. They're like the steak. And I just think if you're gonna charge 20, $24, or whatever it is you're charging for a rack of ribs, you should treat it like lobster, treat it like, you know, a nice steak. This fat that we see here, that won't render out during my cooking processes. So I just come in with a spoon. I love fat, and I, but I like the, the right kind of fat. So I want it to be kind of rendered out and, 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 and not be gloppy fat, but kind of get that golden kind of hue to it. And that's about it. it you know, it's an exp Now this is a pretty nice rack of ribs. If I was looking at this from a competition standpoint, I will just take this one bone off right here because I know I'm not going to give it to the judges anyways. Um, and you'll see, and you could maybe come in here and trim a little bit off here. Again, just thinking about that one bite, not having something that's too fatty. When it comes to barbecue, how much seasoning do we put on and how long does that seasoning stay on there before we cook it? And, and it's probably like a simple bell graph. The seasoning on there for a length of time, then uh, the quality goes up and then it kind of tops out and then it starts to drop back down. Generally speaking, I tell people bigger cuts, longer time with the rub, thinner cuts, less time. So my go-to time with my rub that I made with ribs is about an hour. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the rub to start to dissolve a little bit. And I'm looking for it to kind of get glassy. But, and I want that flavor to kind of penetrate, but I don't want it to cook the rib or pull the moisture out. You can tell a lot by a cook and how they season. And I think seasoning with care. I mean, my goal when I season these ribs is to have the right quantity on there and for it to be evenly distributed. So I'm really careful about how I season. I love these shakers here, but if I were just gonna, if I were just going to use it out of a bowl, I just, you know, kind of cast it. I go up a little bit higher. I don't want it to be really heavy in one spot and lacking in, an, in another. I want every guest, every bite to kind of have just the perfect amount. And, and I will even, if I have them in the shaker, just shake it up to make sure black pepper in this case tends to settle down. And I'm just gonna, hopefully, in a very uniform way, hit this with just the right amount of rub. So what is just the right amount of rub? So, if we talk about competition barbecue like we have, competition barbecue is pow! It's like you just smack them, you know, with how flavorful that rib, that rib is. This one here's got a lot of salt, and it's got, a, it's got some crushed red pepper in it with the rub you made. And so that crushed red pepper, as we both know, packs a lot of heat. 
I think what you did there is perfect. I tend to put it on there until it just disappears. I say this to my dad all the time. Uh, I don't know why we call these rubs. I think we should call it a pack because I like to press the seasoning into it. So I feel like when you have something like a paprika, at least you have some color indication right on the cover. That's right. Much and with your rub. White. Yeah. yeah. And I just roll it right around there. And I overspray intentionally when I'm seasoning. And, and you'll see how I use that over shake uh, after I do this meat side. I always do the bone side first and the meat side second. Why? Uh, because I, I love the way you ask why, because uh, otherwise it's meaningless why I do it. Because I'm gonna load these ribs with the meat side up. When you're feeding lots of people, it's about movement management, doing things as, uh, as efficiently as possible. So by just starting with the, the, the bone side, ending with the meat side, it's going on the cooker with the meat side up. A lot of people ask, do you cook uh, fat side up or fat side down? And you gotta just think about what it is you're cooking on and how the heat travels. So anyways, I press it like that and then I just pick up this rib and I just tap these edges in that little extra rub that I had. And we'll, we'll do both of our, our racks of ribs and we're gonna let them sweat room temperature for about an hour. So we, you know, make sure our pit's at the cooking temperature we're looking for and, uh, and, and let this flavor start to uh, absorb into the meat. So we seasoned up our ribs, we got our grill going. Let's, let's take them to the fire. Four hours. Right, four hours, <laughs> time for a beer.